Welcome back, Rayleigh Small Engines. We've got a new start Briggs and Stratton, very dirty. Intech. Well, we uh think there may be a battery problem. Nope. Well, it'll try to turn over, but it won't. And I'm gonna show you how to check and know if you've got a bad camshaft. Then, since I already know, I'm gonna show you how to put a camshaft in this engine. Y'all stand by. We've got uh, another little issue. If you'll notice the deck is raised all the way up, but it's still touching the ground. There's why. We gotta do some welding. Look at that belt guard bent. All the trash. Y'all stand by, let's get to working on this thing. That's terrible. You were expecting T-Bow. No, man, I'm a lawnmower lady and I like fixing small engines. Yep, that's what happens when you do a bad weld. They show up to pick you up. Okay, so all I've done, remove the four bolts valve cover off. Sorry about all the racket. Put the valve cover off and the spark plug out. I'm going to take my hand put it up on the top of the flywheel up here and we're going to look for a bump on the intake valve. And what I mean by bump it'll rotate through, it'll come closed and then instead of opening all the way it'll just go bump. That'll tell you your camshaft is good. Now, I'm going to try and get a link right up in the top up here that will show you one that does have the bump. So, I'll put a link to a video up here. Hopefully, I can get that in the right spot on this video. But what I'm going to do, and you want to make sure your valves are adjusted. This is a little loose. But, we're going to just spin the engine. That's my exhaust valve because there's the exhaust pipe. Your intake is over here and goes down to this valve. Okay. We're going to spin the engine over. Our exhaust valve is opening. Here goes our intake valve opening. I'm still turning. Now I'm going to watch. This comes back open. There should be a thunk, a little bump right there. Okay. I'm still spinning. Here we are back again. Valve open. Valve closed. No bump. Camshaft is bad. Let's show you how to fix that. Here's the problem. I think their bearings are gone. Okay, so very simple to remove this engine. Gonna remove the starter bolt or nut, take the wire off. This one has a connection here and then this connection. Of course, undo your battery first for safety because you don't want to short anything out. So, starter, plug, plug, undo them. Moving over here, we'll want to, sorry about my cable in your way, we're going to remove these two bolts to get the exhaust loose off the engine. We're on the other side of the tractor now. You don't even have to unplug this off your carburetor, just leave it there. Undo your fuel line. This one's got one of those breather hitchy moves that goes to the top of the tank. That just slides off, pop your fuel line off, then under here, let's see, I'm going to loosen this up, and it's kind of dirty. This will have, should have a Z-bend on it. We'll loosen this up, pop your throttle cable off. Then we go underneath. Now, underneath the lawnmower, you want to pop this rod off the front of the deck, and the deck can just hang down. It'll be fine. Goodness, they need to clean the underside. We're going to take this belt off. Then we're going to remove this bolt and hopefully this pulley will slide right off of there. Sometimes they're a booger man, sometimes they're not. So we'll get that off and then I don't know if you can see that bolt way back there. Let's see. There's four of them under here that hold that. Sorry about that. There's another one. Should be another one there. And another one back there. We'll take those four, those four bolts off. Then we can set the engine on the bench.
welcome back. Step 487. For torques, we're gonna pop these bad boys. I just flipped it on its back. We've got the oil drain. Just back these both off just a little bit. That's all you need. I'll show you how to set all this back up. Now I'm just grabbing the big nut. We'll take it off and the rockers. Buzz these guys off. Now you'll notice this will be aluminum. Your push rod on the intake side will be aluminum. The one on the exhaust will be steel. Do not lose these little caps off the top of your valves. So go ahead and put that together. I like to put everything back on the same side that it came off of. Good rule of thumb. It's not critical. Well, it could be, but just do it. Just do it. See, that one's steel. Pull my little cap off. Lay those together to the side. Now I'm going to flip it over on its back. Boy, when I flipped it over, I could hear little pieces. Y'all bear the noise here a second. I'm going to pause you while I do that. Didn't think y'all wanted to hear all that racket. So let's pull this thing apart. You'll notice all these are the same length. Now be gentle, you do not want to break these ears off. Usually just a little bump and you'll hear it come loose. Just like that. Lift this puppy off. Oh, there went pieces. That was, just so you know, the oil pump shaft, which we're gonna take that apart too. I always take that out when I go to put these back together. It makes it easier to line everything up. Your governor, always check and make sure it's not all messed up because sometimes those pieces that get in there and eat it up, it sits right on top of the cam. Now we're gonna pull the cam out. There's your camshaft. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to show you what's wrong. Let me go get the new parts. Crankcase gasket, Briggs and Stratton. PTO shaft seal. And a new cam and lifters. These are your new lifters. Folks, you can buy this stuff cheap aftermarket stuff trust me it will not last new cam old cam here is your compression release when this thing goes to spinning it throws this out and what happens if you watch are y'all on the screen let's see this thing right here that bumps and opens your valve just a crack and then when it your engine starts cranking the centrifugal force will pull this weight open then it no longer bumps you can see it's got a flat side i'm gonna see if i can get around here where y'all can surely see this see it's got a flat side and see right there it's out past the cam and that's how a compression release works so get you a little stick magnet and just start poking around down in here and you'll find stuff pieces parts but you want to make sure that you get this whole thing see all these parts you want to make sure that you clean there's more of it you can see where it's got in here and hit the bottom of the counterbalancer and all hit you know thingamabob whatever you want to call it somebody get technical Oh, you're not using the right proper names for this stuff. Well, I call it a hitch and no thing on my bob. There's another piece. But anyway, we'll want to flip this up. We're going to wash all this off, clean off this gasket. I'm going to get all this stuff cleaned up and ready to go. Anybody want some spare parts? I'll get all this cleaned up and ready to go, and I'll show you how to put it all back together. Okay, before we go finish cleaning this, I'm going to, you can do it with brake cleaner, whatever you have. We're gonna get rid of this uh, oil filter off of here. We're gonna get the oil pump out. But I wanna show you right quick, let's see if I can do this where you can see. When we go to knock the seal out, 
there is a hole right there. If you can see that hole right behind the seal, right in there. Let's see if I can get it lit up from the back side here. See that hole? You want to mark exactly where this seal is. So when you put it back, you do not want to block off that hole, okay? We want to make sure that way you can get your lubrication up here where it's supposed to be. So let's get that seal knocked out. I'm going to take off this oil filter and well, I'll do the oil filter over there. And let's take this oil pump out, pull the shaft out. Let me see that y'all can see. Okay. Take a little screwdriver and should pop right up. There should be a little O-ring under here. See that O-ring? We'll want to take clean all that up also. The reason I take this out, one, it needs to be clean. Two, it'll make it easier when you go to put this cover on to line up your oil. This will go into the cam and goes into the oil pump. So if you put this in the cam and then you slide your oil pump in, you can, it's easier to line up and get the crankcase to go back together. But these will usually pop right, there they come. They pop right out. Remember what side. I always like to put them back the same way. This come out this way, so it's going back in this way. Okay. Now, let's get this seal knocked out. Real simple. A punch and a hammer. Flip this over. That's a little block of wood. Now they remember where that seal was. Take a picture of the doggone thing. Whack. There's your seal. Well, almost. There's your seal. And a little spring. This is what you want to be careful of not rolling over when we put this back on to the engine. Y'all stand by. I'll get the rest of this cleaned up. And we'll put this thing together for you guys. Great goodness, that takes a long time cleaning up gaskets and stuff. Anyhow, next thing we want to do is you get your specialized seal installation tools. Lay them gently near your work area. Get your seal out. And we're going to put in a seal. This smell funny. It's a sock. There's one part of it. Sometimes you don't always have a socket to fit that size seal to drive that thing in. Let me get you guys a little closer and we'll show you what we're going to do. What we're going to do, I'll show you this. This is just a plain old 3 8 extension. You can tell I've beat the dickens out of it. But the end of them are usually round. It has been ground down and it's nice and smooth and flat. And we're going to start this with the hammer in here flat. And then we'll work this all the way around, taking our time. What we don't want to do is block off that hole right there. So let's see if we can get us in here and get this lined up and ready to go. up the ridge of this seal take your time it's not a race folks I think most of this video is going to be all in real time I wanted y'all to see exactly how long it takes to do this about the only thing I didn't film was over in the vat cleaning up these parts and making them look pretty stand by we're gonna move to the next step now that's clean on the inside you can lay your peanut butter or pimento cheese sandwich up on that thing what we're about to do we're gonna look in here on this gear 
and we're looking for a dot there it is see the dot right there we're going to line that dot up basically over this way so that when we sit our cam in there we can line that dot up with the dot on our camshaft which is right there somewhere can you see there you go right there so i'm going to turn that crankshaft over and we're going to line that up drop some lifters and drop a cam in what i'm going to use is the bolt from the pulley i just just makes it easy screw this down and you can take a wrench and turn it i should be done with this in about 20 30 minutes 400 threads should have paused the video for this but y'all want to see it all i'm going to show it here we go she's going to turn close enough i've got our dot basically lined up over here you don't have to use a fancy squirt bottle you can use some oil or assembly lube or whatever you want it's no big deal it'll be okay we're going to put these lifters right back in the hole down here and get a big old fat hand down in here there's one sorry i bumped the camera i think and i don't know what kind of oil that is but it's oil we're going to leave this cam I just don't like starting stuff up dry. And before we start this engine, we'll probably spin it over anyway. Now let's find that dot. We're gonna drop this cam in. All right, let me wipe this off my hands and I'll show you what I'm talking about that our timing is good. All right, folks. See our dots are lined up. We should be in good shape. Next thing is let's drop this governor in. Just basically you want to line it up with your governor shaft right there with the tip of this. Does not matter where this gear is. All it needs to do is it'll just lock right in on with the camshaft. That's what's going to drive it, okay? Because you get it right in there about centered, and then this is going to line up inside of your case when we drop that on. Let's oil it a little bit. That look good? Okay, there we go. Stop, stop. Sorry about the background noise, it is pouring rain. When you open these packages, that's kind of sticky. We don't need that. Take your time getting the gasket off because it will stick and tear. So take your time. See right there, sealed under there? So I'll be back with you. Let me let this rain slack up a little bit so you guys can hear. So we got us some oil a little wiped all around this. You want to be careful you don't roll this seal. Take your time. There we go. We're going to take a little screwdriver. Kind of work this seal a little bit. Make sure you're going around the crankshaft. We don't want to roll it. A little bumpy bump. Put a little bit of pressure at the time and push that seal very gently. Starting to roll right there. I saw it rolling, so I stopped. Let's do it again. Sometimes what it takes, folks, you don't want to lose that spring.
little little tappy taps. There she goes. Just bear with me, folks. Real time, this is what it takes. Make sure I get my flashlight. Seal is not rolled. Ta da! There she is. We're going to put a little blue Loctite on these and throw those in. Then we're going to do the oil pump. All right, I've got a little scunch of Loctite. If you're working on this engine upside down, what you're going to want to do is put your little block under each side. The reason being is because of crankshaft in play. And what will happen is this won't go down all the way until you get that pressure off of the crankshaft. The crankshaft will be wanting to go up. So just get you a little bit of wood block wedges or you can stand it up this way if you like. I'm trying to do this so Ow, that was my toe. So that you guys can see. So I ain't got an injury now on my toe. So we got our blue lock tied in. Let's run these bolts in and I'll be right back with you. When you tighten any of these bolts down, go in a cross pattern. They probably have, I know they do. Anyway, there'll be torque specs, da 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 da. I've been doing this long, I don't even torque these things. I don't even torque my own. I just long handle ratchet and I can feel it and know where it's supposed to be. I trust me, it ain't coming back. In the pack with your lifters comes a new oil pump, drive, hitch you move, thing them above. What you want to do is line it up down there with the camshaft, it'll kind of just lock in, just slides in. Either way, they're both the same on each end, okay? So it doesn't matter, not critical. Let's put a little oil on that too. There we go. Spin her around, she's locked in. Next, what we want to do is drop in the outer portion. And the fun part is like a puzzle, see? There it is. Pops right in. Do a little oil on this O-ring. Can't tell if y'all can see what I'm doing or not. Pop that right in there. Got to take our cover. Nice, pretty clean. Pop it up there. I did put a drop of lo uh, blue Loctite on each one of these. A little tiny drop. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then, I know some people fuss. Yep. Not the space shuttle, folks. It'll be okay. I ain't scared. Y'all scared? I ain't scared. I'm just going to go back. Double check. Okay. Well, we're getting somewhere. Let's flip her over and uh, see if we're going to put some uh, rocker armage and stuff on there. What you think? All right, y'all ready? Let's put this part together. A little shot of oil there and there. Let's do our little caps. Yes, I'm putting these back exactly where they come off. Even these are going in the same direction. You can see the wear marks from right here. Now we're going to make sure that we drop this down into the lifters. You can see down in there. Just look down in there. You'll, you'll see it. Push rod installed. Drop that on. Let's give these a little shot of oil too. Let me just go run these down. 
I don't know where this piston is. I don't know where anything is. I'm just screwing it on there. It'll be all right, folks. Trust me. Let's see what moves first. I'm going to take my bolt down here, my wrench, and we're going to turn the engine over. Look at there. That was exhaust valve just moved. Run that on down a little bit. There is intake. All right. Exhaust valve open. So that means this one is ready. Torx bit. I got four thousandths is what we're working with here, folks. A little bit of drag. Beautiful. All right, let's keep going. Let's open this one. Now that this one's open, we're going to set this one. And I know what the specs are, guys. I set a tight four and a loose four. Never had a problem. Beautiful. We're gonna spin her again. Let's keep spinning her around. Now let's watch, see if we got that bump in here on the intake valve. Look at that, see it? There it was. Did y'all see that bump? Back around, here's exhaust. Now watch, intake is open. It's coming back, it's coming back. My wrench slipped off. I'm gonna show you the little bump. There it was, see that? There it was. All right, next step, we're gonna do a little, I use just RTV black. We're gonna put us a little bead around here. I just do, when you put this on, make sure the numbers are up toward the blower housing. I'm gonna run a little bead around here and then we're just gonna let it sit overnight. We'll tighten them down. I'm gonna let it sit probably 20, 30 minutes and then I'm gonna come back and then I'll tighten them on down and then let it cure overnight in place. I'm just running me a little bead around here trying not to make a mess. I don't like to see RTV all over the place. It looks like a good coat. Numbers up, I said, right? Is that what I said? Whopper right there. Get my cap back on so my stuff don't go bad. You know those little tube things? They're a single use only, I tell you. We're gonna see if we can find us some bolts. Now, I don't like to tighten these down right off the bat. I like to let them sit a little bit and then I'll come back. I'm just gonna run them down to the about touch. See it barely move. Just barely touch them in. That way you know you got good contact all the way around. Now I'm gonna let that sit about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and I'll come back, tighten them down. We'll let it cure overnight. And tomorrow we're gonna put this engine back on. But y'all gonna see that like up next. One more quick tip I forgot to mention. I wasn't worried about it because it's getting a new air filter anyway. When you flip these engines upside down, you're gonna lose some gas and you could saturate that air filter. So remove the air filter before you go flipping these engines upside down like this so you don't saturate it or ruin it unless you just know you're gonna put a new one in it. So anyhow, I'll be back shortly in the morning.
right, folks, moment of truth. Let's see if she'll actually run. for stopping by it's great to meet you lots of fun um, I got you something here it's a hacksaw for when you get out of jail it'll help you get out of jail for that bad weld <laughs> thanks for stopping by just messing with you y'all stick around a minute click that subscribe button we got a mail call I got something that came in the mail I've got to show you guys I want to share it with you we appreciate you guys subscribing and watching our channel Thank you so much. Y'all stick around. I got something else to show you. I would love getting stuff in the mail, especially a present. This is going to be, we got two things in the mail today, or yesterday, sorry. Uh, Roger McDonald. Thank you, sir, very much. Roger McDonald was kind enough to go on our Amazon wish list. Sent me a new set of torch tip cleaners. Lord knows I go through those. We'll wear them out because I use them all the time, welding and cleaning carburetors. Thank you, sir, for that. He also, well, I couldn't, I, I, two presents? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We got a set of inverted Torx bits that I uh, needed. I'll get a lot of use out of these tools. I really appreciate it, Roger. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, subscribers. You guys come back to see us, and we'll see you next time.